Just waiting for the uh, camera to get. All right, I got the thumbs up. How's it going, everybody? Thanks for being out here. I really uh, want to just take a real quick moment to introduce myself. My name's uh, Conley Razor, friends of Dee and Dr. Terry for many, many years. And uh, we're all out here uh, for the same reason, to celebrate the desert, to celebrate each other, to celebrate curiosity and inspiration, all things that the desert brings just naturally to those that really want to seek the teachings of the desert. And uh, we have um, a lot of really good people that are going to speak today. And I would like to go ahead and just kind of start a little bit about inspiration. You know, uh, it all starts with a vision. Uh, the Blake Williams Desert Research Center is just that. It was a vision. It started with that. And that's how powerful we are, especially when we are together. And we can take a vision. We can bring elements together. Maybe we're not experts in everything, but we can find people that are. And we can find people that truly care about making a vision come alive. And so first off, I'd just like to go ahead and give a round of applause to uh, Dee and Dr. Terry and in spirit, Blake Williams and Leslie Townsend here. Let's go ahead. Thank y'all so much for your vision. So it all starts with inspiration, right? And just by being out here, it's dusty, it's hot, you're sweaty. You might smell a little ripe, but that's okay. That's, that's what the desert is. That's why the desert is so special. It holds secrets, it holds teachings, and it holds this excitement and joy that can really come alive within you and within others and that's what you know this facility here is going to continue to do for many many decades and years and endless time to come it gives people an opportunity to share their stories and their own interpretations of what the desert truly means to them down from the small tiny insects from even underneath the ground the geology, the bi biology, and um, archaeology even out in this desert, up to the teachings of the stars and astronomy and the things of physics out that we see every night. Luckily, I had the opportunity many times uh, with Dr. Terry and others to experience the story of the night sky in the desert, and it does tell quite a story. And just by looking out and gazing on the horizon and breathing in all the air and actually being quiet, still, listening, resonating, and translating that majestic message that the desert can give all of us. That's something that is more valuable than, for me at least, anything else in life. And it teaches you about life. It teaches you about yourself. It teaches you compassion, care for others, love, understanding, and it's still mysterious. There's still many things that we can learn. And this research center here, the Blake Williams Research Center, the field station, this is a testament to that vision. So with us all being here, I want to go ahead and welcome everyone. I thank you all for inviting me and thinking about me. Thank you very, very much. And I'd like to uh, call our first very, very special guest, <laughs> Leslie Townsend, uh, wife of the late Blake Williams. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, first, uh, can you hear me there? Yeah, if you want to. Let me I mean, really. So much thanks to Dee and Martin for making this possible. Um, uh, your, your just boundless generosity and vision in the, in the wake of everything else you've done and have going on, I, I just my, my gratitude and I know Blake's gratitude uh, would be there as well. So um, I can't thank you enough for this honor. It's it's unbelievable, really. And uh, I, for those of you who don't know, Blake's ashes are scattered up on the hill. So I like to think that he is going to be here 
overlooking this and protecting this for eternity. And that's what it feels like to me out here, eternity. This desert feels very, very eternal to me. Uh, I think for Blake, this was a very, very special magic place. I believe he was quite envious when Martin first acquired it. And uh, he w wasn't a person who indulged in envy, but I think he really uh, appreciated from day one what you had out here. Very, very special place. This was one of his favorite places to come. Uh, Blake was Buddhist, and I believe what this reflected was the Zen garden. It was this place for contemplation and rejuvenation, meditation, communing with nature, um, all of the things that go along with that. And uh, so again, I just, I just can't, words just cannot uh, come to me for how much I appreciate this. Um, you know, I, I think he both saw the, the seeming simplicity and yet the endless complexity of what is out here and there, there weren't enough trips to really study and, and assess everything he wanted to learn from this place. So I'm very glad this is his final resting place. And when, when I think about what it meant to him, uh, Dee and I were talking last night, um, there was a very special poem that means a lot to Martin and Dee and it meant a lot to Blake and I and it kind of reflects I think the sense of perpetualness and an ongoing sustainability that we want out here. And so uh, we decided that it would be appropriate. And it's from the four quartets, which, which I bet most of you know. And it's certainly one of our favorite poems uh, from the Little Giddings um, segment. With the drawing of this love and the voice of this calling, we shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all of our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. Through the unknown remembered gate, when the last of earth left to discover is that which was the beginning, at the source of the longest river, the voice of the hidden waterfall and the children in the apple tree, not known because not looked for but heard, half heard in the stillness between two waves of the sea, quick now, here, now, always, a condition of complete simplicity, costing not less than everything, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well, when the tongues of flame are enfolded into the crowned knot of fire, and the fire and the rose are one. Thank you all. Thank you, CDTA. It's an unbelievable honor. Thanks, Leslie. And uh, next, we'd like to uh, bring up <laughs> Dr. Terry's daughter, Tammy. All right. Hello everyone, I am Tammy Terry. I am Dr. Terry's oldest daughter. And I, I come here with a perspective maybe a little bit different than anyone else here because I was around before this happened and I got to watch the amazing growth and evolution that, that my dad walked along on this journey. Um, you know, when, when I was a kid, he raised us camping, you know, and, and fostered a love of the outdoors. You know, I, I will never forget our first trip out to the Big Bend uh, together. And, and actually, we stopped in Shafter and, and met with these, you know, these older little ladies um, who, you know, at the time, I, I was maybe 12, uh, 11 or 12. And I was wondering, why is my dad talking to these random people, you know? Uh, but, <laughs> but that was my dad, you know? Uh, he, he made a point to reach out and to connect to people in all sorts of places and all walks of life. And he was seeking a connection. Um, back then, he was seeking a connection here. And uh, I could see that later when years later I was in law school 
And I remember exactly where I was when I was on the phone with my dad and he was telling me about this property that he was in the process of acquiring. And he was talking about this land. And uh, it was kind of a weird kind of a situation, but he was really jazzed and really excited about it. And I could tell it was something special. I mean, in, in that conversation, I knew there was something that was historic, that was important, that was happening, but I had no idea. Uh, you know, I, I couldn't foresee what. It's just, you know, when you have those moments in life that you know this is, there's something special happening here. And I, I had the privilege of, you know, coming out here with him a short time later once he actually had the land and, you know, we hiked up together, you know, up, up over here. And, you know, Dad was so excited to, to show me, look, you know, here we have the medicine. And, um, you know, it's been, it's been incredible to be able to witness my dad really find that vision and, and bring it to life and uh, to share such an incredible, important part of his journey with all of you and to have all of you here to, you know, commemorate this moment. Um, you know, I, I also, of course, I remember learning about Blake, you know, this guy who worked for the district attorney's office in Austin, who was, you know, kind of this renegade, uh, you know, working along with dad and, and Trout on, on this very important cause of, you know, cactus conservation, uh, which has been, you know, a passion of my dad's ever since I can remember. So um, to be a part of this and to, to be here today with all of you is incredibly special. And, and Dad, you've, you've been an inspiration. You've taught me so much. And you continue to teach me in the way that you live your life and the way that you dedicate yourself to the importance of continuing on life in this way, you know, conserving. Um, you know, that's been a huge, huge thing that you've imparted to me as well. And so thank you. And D, having you be a part of our life has been absolutely transformative. And, and I feel so incredibly honored, you know, that you are in our life and such a loving force, um, you know, to watch you two together walk along this journey and really bring to life the field station, you know, which is the most, le you know, the most recent evolution of the journey of this place. It's, it's been absolutely incredible and I, I could not be a luckier person to have you all in my life. So thank you so much and thank you everyone for being here. This is uh, truly, truly so incredibly meaningful. Much love to everyone. And uh, I would just like to uh, conclude uh, before we finish out here uh, with just a, a story that actually I, I dreamed this a while back. And um, this is what you're building inspired the dream. Uh, there was once a little girl, very poor, didn't have anything, but had a dream of a grand cathedral. And in the dream, she could see the mosaic, the, the bricks, the interior, the drapes, you know, the seats inside of this cathedral, the stained glass on the sides and the outside of this grand, beautiful area where people can come together. Well, she was poor, but she did have a pencil and paper, and she drew what she thought would be the cathedral on the piece of paper. And from that, she went to the mason. And the mason went on and said, well, maybe we can dream this up. The mason went to bed. The mason dreamed about it. The mason went to the architect. The architect, they started getting people together. They started building. Their vision became one. Then they went to the interior designer. The interior designer said, oh, wait, we can change it up a little bit. We can make it better. And then... Once all these people came together, people from the whole entire town came together to build this great grand cathedral. The little girl looked at her piece of paper and realized it was greater than what anybody on their own could have ever thought of. And that's, for me at least, that's what this is a representation of. It's a representation of everybody's love together, everybody's vision, everybody's heart. And it will continue to grow with your help. So with that, I want to say thank you very much. Um, I'm sure that if there's anything people want to talk about, this is a really good time to mingle. Uh, Alexine has uh, actually some really good information on some of these items uh, over here that you can uh, purchase. We have mugs, we have jelly, we have 
uh, t-shirts, and there's different uh, ways that you can contribute yourself. Alexine, go ahead. Thank you, Conley. Right, real close, yeah. right up there. Okay, I, I hope you can hear me. I don't know. Um, we are a nonprofit, therefore we are always appreciative of funds, donations. So we have coffee mugs for $15, and the coffee mugs have our information on them and uh, the painting, an original painting of the collared lizard, lizard of the desert. The painting was done by a friend of Dee's and Martin's and from a photograph that Brian Pinnock took, I believe, in this very desert. So it's an actual desert inhabitant. We have t-shirts with a lizard on the back, which I'm wearing. They are $20. We have prickly pear jelly for $10 each. And most of them are inside in the cool area. And we also have a silent auction for a Texas flag that's on display. The minimum bid is $50. All the proceeds go to the CDPA. So we can only take cash today. Our square isn't working here. And if, you're, um, if you don't have cash or a check, We'll actually trust you. I'll just take your name and give you what you want, and you can send us a check later. Okay? So I think that's, uh, I think we've covered it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What about other people saying a few words until other people sure. want to say something? Yeah, I think so. Is it anyone is welcome to come up and say, I think <laughs> the person right there, okay. Not. <laughs> I just, yeah, I mean, I'm just sitting here thinking. Um, that this is an event that, uh, is this on? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. That this is an event that, uh, you know, we're hearing with great eloquence about the coming together and the group effort. And um, I'm sure that everyone in this group has some similar stories and some different ones. Uh, one that I'm sure comes together is that D probably connected us. Uh, D is, you know, I think of D sort of sitting there calmly, whom can I connect today? <laughs> and a lot of this for uh, my husband and me began when um, we sold a property in Terlingua Ranch to D and then Wayne. Uh, and she, part of the reason that she wanted it was that the Davis Mountains uh, were not really her thing. Uh, Dee, as you know, spent 13 years in community organizing in Botswana. 13 years, Dee, about? About, <laughs> the, the gentle sort of about. Um, and I lived in Africa, I lived in Kenya for several years, and she, immediate, you know, she had felt, as I did, that when you're out here, you might as well be in Africa. And then you see some of the, uh, oh, why can't I think of the word for the animals? And uh, the, the pronghorn and so on. And then you think you're in Africa. Well, Dee once said to me that she thanked me for showing her through this land about silence quiet, and I'm sort of thinking, uh-uh, no, I'm not buying it. She knew this long before. But another quality of D is that everyone else gets praised and noticed and supported and loved. And we, of course, give that back to her. Uh, but this, this is a characteristic I know of very few people. Maybe none, really, other than, you know, um, so it's, uh, that has always meant a great deal to me. The other thing is, you guys all are familiar with the desert. I grew up in the dreaded northeast and the north, and we don't look a lot because we have all these big trees and all this green in front of us, and we think it's lush and diverse when it is, I mean, it's not monoculture, but it's not the desert. And people ask me, why are you in the desert? And I think of Dee's comment about the land and then getting to know Martin, of course, and beginning to see in depth. Like, 
if you there's this feature in the New York Times where they want you to look at a piece of art for five minutes on their site, and that's because people don't look for five minutes. But if you look, this is so much more ecologically diverse than anything I grew up with, and you all know this, but this was a big deal for a northern boy, a uh, damn Yankee, right? Uh, and I think a lot of that is just uh, serendipity, but it's also from knowing them for now 17 and 10 years, how many of us have been up on that hill with Martin? I mean, I would better ask who hasn't been. Another a thing about Martin that I would like to add um, is, and I hope this is taken well, but we all know Martin's laugh, right? <laughs> I'm not going to imitate. But one of the things about Martin's laugh that I loved from the very first time I met him was that it was the glee of a child. And a true researcher, uh, I'm thinking here, so many people judge before investigation. And my impression of the true academic, the true research, is they investigate and maybe never judge. <laughs> uh, and so with Martin, I, as long as I've known him, it just has this sort of childish, like, that's interesting, or what about that? Or just, I've never heard him say anything like, oh, no, we don't want to do that, or oh, no, we're not going to look at that, or something. It's always just been this wonder and joy. And I think that when this land came up for sale, which, of course, long before I knew him, what are the odds that this property, with its cactus and so on, would meet Martin Terry? You got to wonder what was going on there. And I've been just thrilled to know them. Uh, this is just a, a little bit of what I might share if, um, if I didn't want to get booed off the stage or I want to get booed off the stage. But I think that what the work that gets done, we do what we can. I was talking with Chris Best about reseeding cactus, uh, seeding and growing and so on. And we do the best we can. Can we change the world? No. Can we Margaret Mead it? Everybody knows the quote. It's one of Dee's favorite about uh, changing the world, and it's the work of one person at a time. Um, you all know this better than I do. I haven't memorized it. But here we have a whole group of people supporting two who have made this happen, and I just thought it was worthwhile saying a little more, and I hope others will too. Love you guys. I just want to say the spread in there, everyone's being bashful about the spread. You guys are missing out. I don't know what's going on in there, you know, but you got to get in there when this is over. I'll keep it short. I, I just want to express my appreciation for how immensely important this is uh what you guys have done here i mean texas has so few things like this and i li i spent 20 years learning botany in a state where things like this were not common but certainly more common than here and uh you know when i when i learned about this place and first visited it and i've visited it many times i it hit me you know how immensely important this is this kind of habitat is so rare i mean you've got a couple places to do research on things like you know soil communities and plant speciation and things like that but uh you know in texas like big bend and whatever but but something like this that's dedicated to it's so rare and um you know i wish i wish so many more places in texas had stuff like this like south texas like we just acquired 145 acres in south texas in jim hogg county you know many of these same plants but different ecotypes same species different ecotypes grow in south texas they've got broader leaves the leaves aren't as thin this is a phenomenon I've seen in like 12 or 13 different species like the Jatropha and et cetera. Even the Sydney tenuifolia, the skeleton leaf, you know, the ones down there look way different than the ones here. Um, and and there's, no, there's no way to study it. There's so few people interested down there. Well, part of the way that you save stuff is you get people interested in it. The so part of the way you conserve and you save plant species is you get them to care about it. It blows my mind how many people 
would look at a landscape like this, just, you know, normal citizens and think there's nothing there. Whereas I look at this and I'm like, I got to get out there. I got to see, you know, there's probably, you know, a million different things when you stop and look at the ground, a million different things that are going on and worth studying. And so the way that you inspire that is by having opportunities like this, like a, a building dedicated to it, a parcel of land dedicated to it, to education, research. And so we're stealing your idea here with this, <laughs> with this building. Like that's our next step on the property we got. Like we're trying to build a building, really like the second roof. Um, yeah. Well, it's just me and my friend Javier with the help of Morningstar, a nonprofit. But <laughs> it's, yeah, we're small, you know, steps. We got the land. That was the first thing. But, but I just wanted to express my appreciation for both of you. And um, yeah, man, it's, it's, I can't tell you how important it is, what you've done and, uh, and the legacy you've left. And it's just, it's, it's so immensely important. So thank you. I want to express my gratitude and humility and respect to you guys. So, um, yeah, so thanks a lot. Okay. All right. I'll make this a little quick. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Pinnock. Um, I gratefully get to work with Martin and Dee on a daily basis and help them out here. To have an area where somebody like me can come and do this study, I, I feel like a nobody in the world of botany and ecology and everything like that. I worked in the veterinary industry and things like that, but I think there was a passion of trying to save a voiceless something. But coming out here and getting to meet Martin and Dee and learning about the vision of Blake and this station is everybody deserves to get the chance to come out here and put their passion to use and learn and give back whether you're a botanist or a biologist whether you have a phd or whether you feel like you're a nobody everybody out here matters and for them just to say you're somebody who's curious and you want to come out here and meet us come out here come let's look and let's see and then that just catalysted me to move from virginia out here immediately just for the to work with that passion incredible just i've i never knew why i had the passion for these desert plants and cacti and things until i really met martin and went well now this makes more sense now i i finally understand why i like some things so much but just the giving spirit that they have is just anybody can come out here anybody can meet us anybody can come and learn just come let's chat and talk and it's I'm every day I'm grateful to be out here working with you guys and having the opportunity to learn and be out here amongst academics and everybody like that. It's just an incredible place that you guys have brought to fruition. I'm happy to be a part of it and working with you guys. I met Dr. Terry uh, when I moved to Alpine and started taking some classes at Sol Ross. In uh, 2013, I ended up in his graduate agristology class, and I wasn't a biology major, and it was my first biology class. Um, so I was kind of intimidated, because that's a lot to learn. Um, but he, uh, he, 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 taught, he taught in a different way than any other professor that I've had out there. Um, he invited growth on mutual terms, and he's the only professor in a science class that's ever inspired me to write poetry. So uh, <laughs> I might share it with you later, but, uh, but not now. But uh, you know, I, I wrote poetry using all the agristology vocabulary. And that's something that Dr. Terry inspired. So I just think that's a testament to his creative, creativity and the spirit that he brings and uh, the, the curiosity that I don't think you've ever lost. And and meeting Dee, she makes you feel like it's divine. You know, we're starstruck. So it's been a real honor to get to know Dee and Dr. Terry over the years. And I, I'm, I'm excited to meet more people too um, within their circle of connections. So I'd, thank you for having me. Okay, Leo, all these young folks have had their chance. <laughs> 
I just want to say good afternoon, I think almost. Uh, my name is Leo Mercado. Uh, I am one of the co-founders of what is now Morningstar Conservancy. Uh, we're based in the state of Oregon, technically, but we're functioning in southern Arizona as a conservation group. Specifically, thankfully, I'm retired off the board of directors, and I am now staff cultivator and public liaison. So, uh, as such, I want to say good day to Leslie, Dee, and Martin. Leslie and I met here not that long ago, and I felt we were friends already, and I never met Blake. And so I've been thinking a lot of that relationship that you have with him and he has with this land and we all share with this land. And I'm thinking of other people who wanted to be here today who couldn't make it. And I'm thinking of elders of mine who have passed on now, which is why I'm blessed to be here. So I just wanted to start by sharing a quiet moment to think of them, living and gone, including our friend Sonny McKellar. Let's do that. Oh, thank you. I didn't think I would get up and speak, but I've been feeling this, sitting and listening. And I wanted to say, first of all, Dee, we just met a year ago, but I want to tell you, you radiate intellect and love. And I appreciate that. I feel like my mom and my grandma are back when I'm with you. So I just want to tell you that personally. On behalf of a lot of people other than myself. And Martin, I want to say, I think it's almost 30 years ago now that we first ran around in southern Texas. And I'm so proud of you. Um, you radiate, as somebody just said a little while ago, wonder and joy and I can't imagine a better way to teach also to learn so I just want to acknowledge that about you you have that spirit and myself personally I also feel like I represent native elders by being able to be here I believe this is either the second or third time I've been able to spend the night out here. And it's just such a blessing to see the sun come up here, see it go down again. What I was feeling is that um, the reason I was accepted into the Native American church through my botanical love for the plants of this environment, initially it was Areocarpus fissuratus. I just thought, I have to go out and see those. But as a good little Catholic altar boy, I was very intrigued by this other one that's growing out here too. I knew it held some special provenance for a lot of people. And I didn't know that would eventually become me too. But I just want to state that personally, historically, I came to the Native American church in the ceremonial ways through botany. And I think a lot of times it happens in reverse, that you become amazed that this ceremonial technology exists around this one particular plant. But it's larger than one plant. Every time there's a ceremony, it requires a lot of people and a lot of other plants, including the cotton that made the canvas teepee, the wooden instruments we use, the corn that comes in the morning, the meat, the berries, it's all, I call it applied ethnobotany. And it all comes together, and that's why I love that technology, that ritual, because it's like putting plants to the highest use in one evening and sharing it with other people. And there's something beautiful, but like I say, I came to that beauty strictly through the beauty of this land. So real quickly, when I was working at the copper mines in southern Arizona where I grew up, I would spend my week vacation out here, running around Big Bend. I would get home and 
people would ask me, what'd you do on your vacation? I said, I went to the Chihuahua Desert. And people would say, why? <laughs> and I just had no way of explaining it. And I feel that here. I'm, I'm 18 and 19 again when I'm here. I used to drive Highway 67 running around just looking at the mountains, you know, in my first car I ever bought. And so coming back here is just like I'm 19 again. One thing I wanted to say is speaking as somewhat of a representative of a lot of people who rely on peyote as a spiritual medicine, and I mean rely on it, which I believe is the root word, the source of religion. But it's a reliance, and it's very practical and elementally based. It's not way out here in some other world. That's what I like about it. It's right where we sit on the dirt in the teepee. <laughs> Something really beautiful about that. And it's very humble. And as such, we don't have a Vatican. We don't have a Lord's. Uh, we don't have a Mecca. You know, um, we don't have a Lhasa. And fortunately, we have no Pope either. And I love that it's a very humble way and what I call an awesomely disorganized religion because I have a hard time being a member of an organized one. So I just wanted to say that since we don't have those things, we've had Grandma Cardenas' house for many years now that we can stop and visit. And it's very humble. It's very simple. It's my Nana's house that just feels like it, looks like it. And I was fortunate to know her a little bit and be in there. And it, it, it smelled like my Nana's house. It was my Nana's house. I even dreamed about it before I first ever got there. Um, well, I just wanted to share with Leslie and Dee and Martin that this is also that. This is like a bridge between that traditional spirituality and our tomorrow. It's uh, the intellect and the love, just like Dee represents. The potential science of it, to me, is actually a prayer. So I just wanted to say that. I want to clarify that we don't have these vaulted cathedrals. But we do have this. And there's just nothing more beautiful. So I would like to just, I think share a prayer song and use it as a prayer for the perpetuity of the sacredness of this place. So I will do that. Thank you very much for your attention. Appreciate your patience. <laughs> Mechinayo, Mechinayo, Wani, Wachi, Elo, Wichonewa, Ho, what day, Elo, Yo, we know, Eyalna, Eneo, Aho, thank you. All right, what a beautiful, beautiful song. Okay, you're coming up? Good. Didn't see anybody raise their hand. Thanks. I know it's getting hot, so I'll be I'll be brief, but I just want to say that I'm really humbled to be to be here. And I'm here because of Martin and Dee and Tammy and Leslie and the beauty of the p passion and the purpose of everyone here and the desert. And um, I guess I'm ne I'm part of the next chapter, which is the legacy and the con conservation of this land. So the audacity of perpetuity for all. Thanks.
All right. Again, thank you, everybody. And thank you for sharing your stories. It doesn't have to stop here. We can mingle. There's plenty of uh, uh, beverages and, and food in there, finger food. There, we have uh, merchandise here. We have that cactus jelly. So feel free. And thank you all, all again for coming and help building this vision with D, Terry, Leslie, <laughs> and everyone else. Thank you. Mm.